Okay, we're back. Um, cats were found. Sandwiches were made. Uh, and we we're gonna fun. we're gonna talk about a game called Cuphead. So, Cuphead is an indie game. It was it was made by like two guys, right? Um, uh, mostly. I think they it, was were a, it was it was a nice nicely sized small studio. Okay. Oh, okay. But I there was it, they had to do a lot to actually make this game. And if you look at the art style of Cuphead. You would see why because it looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's one of the best animated and looking games I've ever seen. Uh, and I so I've always had interest in it, but I never bought it. And it came out to the Switch, and me and Bradley had a had a time with it. We yeah made some good and, progress. And uh, the fact that I've beat it before did not help at all with us trying to beat these bosses. <laughs> it great. really doesn't. It really doesn't. <laughs> uh, we got our ass kicked for many, many hours, but we had a lot of fun doing it. And that's kind of the whole, that's kind of the whole Cuphead charm. You're gonna get your ass kicked. Um, it is a very hard action platformer where most of the game is you're fighting bosses, um, and these bosses have multiple phases. They have insane attacks, insane transformations. They do like a rubber hose animation style transformation into other forms of themselves and it, there is absolutely no rhyme or reason why they transform there's this boss that's like a plane on a tricycle and she transforms into a moon and she transforms into like constellations it's fucking it's absolute insanity it looks awesome doing it yes they it looks I really, incredible the bird. i really liked the genie boss and like the desert one <laughs> i don't know why that one stuck out to me but like the voice at like because each boss kind of has like its own voice too you know oh mm -hmm. dude yeah. i was gushing about the genie's voice to willer because he does like this way <laughs> that is just hilarious to me <laughs> boss was the easiest to me which he was like... yeah he was he was easier than i feel like most of them i still can't beat the dragon the, the dragon genie? pressure the genie yeah, the kicked genie. our ass man well i mean all the bosses kick your ass ah uh, yeah except except for the turnip but, no joe's right grim matchstick the dragon holy, holy shit, shit. So God, I hate that boss so much. So move, like so do, just to complete the summary of the games because we're we're going to talk about the bosses here in a second and which ones are our favorites and what do we yeah. like about the game. But the negative part of the game is the other portion of it which is the run and gun, which I don't like and I know I know Bradley is more positive towards it. Uh, yeah, I'm I mean pretty negative. I, it's it's okay. I don't I'm with you, Willer. I don't hate it, but I mean you come to the game for the boss fights. I agree, and I feel like a lot of people, like, when they were playing Cuphead, they're like, oh, thank God they took extra time to do the running guns, but honestly, like, I could have done without them. They're really just there for you to have a way to grind out the coins you need to get your upgrades. I, I feel and like I, it'd be cooler if you had boss challenges to get coins or something, like I, I, uh, kill I, the boss so. with the roundabout or kill the boss with the chaser shots or well, something. I think, I think even, like, if, like, the coin showed up during the boss fight and you had to, like, yeah. position yourself poorly to get that coin... That would have been more interesting, but the running guns, though, like I feel like it's just it's just a hassle. They're, they're and they're not very long. It's they're just... badly designed IMO. Like there's inclines in them and enemies coming at like weird angles and like I don't, I don't think they're badly designed. I just don't think they're fun. I feel like the enemy patterns and thought processes, like why they place enemies in certain places, is kind of weird sometimes. And but, it feels uh, very clustered from time to time. Yeah. Me and Will are pretty much just doing the boss fights. Like we did, uh, we did one or two running guns just to get the upgrades we wanted. And uh, we're doing boss fights, which is fine with me, because the boss fights are what makes the game shine. They're really I good. I like the run and gun segments simply because I feel like they're 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 learning grounds, and they're a mediator in difficulty between one boss area to the next. Mm -hmm. A little bit. That's a good point. But I also am a huge fan of run and guns in general, like all the way back to like Gunstar Heroes. Contra. Yeah. Well, and, oh my god, I love Contra. So like I'm a that, huge fan of Mega Man, for example, and that that means not quite a run and gun, but it is definitely a shooty platformer, right? And jump I, shoot man. Yeah. Jump jump shoot man. He shoots jump his limits. Jump shoot man. Do the things. But mm. but the way jump shoot man does things, it's like. Okay, the designers know you're going to jump over this enemy, so they put an asshole enemy right where you're going to jump. And you have to, like, carefully go through the stages, and you have to weave out of enemy patterns and stuff. Um, and it's really noticeable once you start playing. And, like, I feel like the level layouts in, 
in Cuphead don't really have that. But I, I actually also heard that there weren't even going to be running gun levels, but they added it due to fan demand. And it, it really has that vibe where they feel a little bit tacked on. but Forced. That, well, like, and they're not yeah. necessary, I think, for most of the game. They're optional, so correctly. that's okay. Yeah, you don't even have to do them to beat the game. You have to do you need them. To but you need them to get the good upgrades, like the extra health, the smoke yeah. bomb, the spread <sighs> shot. Smoke like, bomb. So good. Smoke bomb's pretty good. The thing is, like, and I agree with you, Willer, is that, like, part of the, the point of the running gun is that you're running and you're shooting and you're killing things. But I feel like with Cuphead, more often than not, you, you're not really killing anything. You're just holding the shoot button and killing anything that's in front of you and then avoiding anything else that is not... Mm-hmm. Like there, there's no reason for you to take out anything other than the fact that it happens to block your way, and then you have to spam the the super button, and then you keep running. Um, I got so it's just they kind of just seem more like a, a a way to get more frustrated. Like when I fight the bosses, with the exception of the dragon, I felt like there's a pattern there that you have to think about and you analyze, and you like really learn the bosses. Like they say, Dark Souls, two D Dark Souls, but like you're kind of right because the whole point of Dark Souls is you yeah. look at your enemy and you slowly read and realize like what that enemy does and learn how to fight that thing as best as well as you can um, with the running guns it's just kind of like it's just frustrating and it's not fun there's no checkpoints it's the whole thing over again um but yeah so yeah okay we'll move on from that and now we're gonna gush about all the positives in the game which there are many of um the the bosses and the weapons you get they, they're just so fun it's really good. Um, me and Bradley did the first two worlds, and then we did the one Popeye. of the boss. Yeah, the Popeye boss, which I got some stuff to say about him. He he might be my favorite. It's it's close. Oh yeah. I yeah, I something about fighting that guy is really fun. That that boss uh, has a pattern where he has. He, he, the boss himself only shoots a gun, and the ship has, like, a move where it shoots a cannonball. But then he can summon, like, sharks, and he has a crane, and at any given time, these things can start attacking you at once, and there's, like, six or seven different, um, things that can attack you, but they all have a really good tell. Um. Yeah, you have to look for the reeds. So, with the crane, the crane's gonna make an angry face, and then as it moves with the angry face, it'll immediately go down as soon as someone, something's below it. So I would yell crane and the, or barrel or something, and I would dash under it, make sure Bradley is like watching out for it, and we would yell out ship because the ship's spitting, and it would just yeah. be this chain of us yelling out dumb names and laughing about it and weaving out of stuff, beams. There's lasers involved. It was really fun. And then I, one of the other bosses we just really like were just loving was um. <laughs> Like the first boss, the uh, or not, not not like the first one, like the slime, the blue slime. Oh Goopy, yes, like Goopy the Legrand, dra- the, yeah. the Dragon Quest slime. That guy's because a fucking god. Thing is, he has the simplest attacks ever. He just he just bounces, <laughs> but despite that, he fucks you up, and it's a lot of fun how simple the boss fight is. It, yet how hard it is so one thing i like about that boss too is that the entire time you you kind of like can really like angle yourself and just shoot straight forward and you really don't have to put effort to where you're aiming and then you get to the last stage and he becomes that tombstone yeah and you have to angle your shots up True. to shoot him and you have to really whereas before you were kind of like dashing shooting some shots then dashing and then shooting some shots this is more like you have to really position yourself in the position to like actually shoot him and, and get time to shoot him because otherwise you're not going to be able to hit him at all. There's another thing that has to go with that, like that gravestone that you're talking about. Um, yeah. So there's two modes to each boss fight, right? There's normal and easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, if you put it on easy, you don't get the final phase of the normal boss fights. Yeah, yeah they, they leave out some phases in the easy mode, right? Yeah, they're just like, uh, the, the, like I feel like those the final phases are just maybe too intense, but I, I like that. That's a nice little feature in easy scaling. IMO. Just uh, as a little side topic, I wanted to bring this up during Sekiro, but I didn't get a chance to because there's a lot of talk right now about games are too hard and they need to have an easy mode so everyone can experience them. But there's the counter argument that some games are made to be hard because it's part of the art form and that's what the designers are going for. That's what I'm saying. Where do you guys fall into that argument? Because it comes up in Cuphead and they chose the way to, hey, if you're going to play the easy mode, you're not going to see the entire boss. 
Um, yeah, it's which like, is a very distinct design. They didn't just lower damage. They didn't just give you more health. They cut out phases of a game where watching the bosses do crazy shit is a big part of the fun. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I watched a video about this from Inside Gaming, and they had a really good kind of uh, explanation to it where it's like, you know, you can you can kind of like passively watch a TV show or a movie, and I feel like a lot of people compare that to um like to compare to video, video games. games to those mediums um but the difference but i think it, it's better to compare video games to a book and that's what they did in that video in that video um because when you read a book you have to actively read the book you have to actively pay attention you have to like actually look and like read each word and process each word and if you can't process each word or sentence or paragraph you're not gonna be able to get what the book is saying and so it's kind of the same with a video game where, like, you, you have to actually interact with the game. You have to try. You have to be, like, invested in the game. Yeah. And there are games that are very simple. And I get that. That's an audience for itself. But, like, mm-hmm. if you read a book and you don't understand what's happening... Um, you can't blame the just author. Means, yeah, you just don't have the skill level for that book 85% like of me. the time. I am bad at book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the author is just bad. Like, it's just a badly written book. And that happens. The same thing happens with games. It's a badly designed game. But, like, the point of the matter is, is that like, you have to make the conscious choice to be a part of that medium. You can't just turn up. Well, like, there's audiobooks now, but you can't just, like, but even with audiobooks, you, you still kind of. Yeah. Still... yeah. And, there, and you, you never get the same. But, like, an audiobook is the same thing as watching someone else stream a game, I feel. You're not really kind of. Uh, sitting down and processing like what you are reading you're not physically holding a thing or or kind of controlling the pacing of yourself through this book you're kind of just being guided along like you don't get control over your experience Mm -hmm. um i I feel like it's a bit different because part of reading i feel like is you also have to be able to imagine and i feel like that's a skill you gain as you read books um you need to be able to spatially recognize where characters are and all that stuff um, you have to be spatially recognized, like where an enemy is and what they're going to do. Yeah. So it's like same kind of you. You have to have some sort of abstract thinking when you're part of this medium, and and movies can do that as well. It's just it's a lot less because everything is being shown to you. Mm-hmm. Like a good movie is when it shows you what it's doing, not what it's telling you what it's doing. True. Yeah. Um. So like this is like a big topic too and and, like i watched like there was a lot of videos about it because it was very controversial and everything but Mm -hmm. um one one argument that i kind of see and can kind of understand i guess is like you paid 60 dollars or however much for the game you know like if you mod it to make it easier for yourself sure yeah that's that's fine Mm -hmm. if if that's how you want to play the game that's great but um i feel like they're, they're so this is something I was discussing earlier, and, and this is controversial controversy warning, you know. Wee woo, wee woo. I, I feel like everything, like, you can't have any, like, if you have any opinions in the games industry that goes against the common grain, you're just kind of like crucified for it. And, like, a game that can't be played by everyone due to a certain skill gap is one of those I feel like controversial opinions like like if, if that like the Sek- Sekiro you know if not everybody can beat it that's the way it is you know um, Agreed. but to kind of go with the book thing you know like you paid for this product it's yours it, sure yeah but like if, if I buy World of Warcraft subscription and then download mods for it and cheats that are going to get my character up faster that's illegal in game like there's like there are certain lines uh that are being crossed you know like mm-hmm. when it comes to cheats and mods like if it's a mod to help your ui user interface be better or add like uh maybe colorblind mode which a lot of games unfortunately don't come with that's yeah. understandable that, but that, it, that, yeah. that's different it's a um, accessibility thing you know yeah yeah i will say though for world of warcraft there are there are various mods that tell you when a certain mechanic is happening in like bosses um and part of that happens to actually do because of the ui for world of warcraft is so ancient and so terrible that you can't actually see what the boss is doing unless it's literally flashing in your face because there's so much other pixels and stuff 
flying around and a lot of debate comes up for that because it's like well that kind of eliminates the difficulty of really reading into that boss mm-hmm. um and, and so Go ahead. yeah um, I, I, it's just I, I feel like it's a back and forth thing um and i think it also comes with the culture because it's assumed for a lot of like rating groups that you have these ui enhancers that you have these alert systems that you have these kind of timers that are pre-made and set for you yeah um and and it, it's a weird cultural thing because i know like and i think i think that's like right now where games are is that everyone has their like niche culture like from software game players like are very much like i want the game to be hard i want it to be difficult i want it to be challenging like that's there are a lot of gatekeepers for yeah. from software and, and which i think i think is wrong i think that's very terrible the gatekeeping. Do. Yeah, yeah you should you should welcome people and you should help people out but at the same time it's like it's it's kind of you know uh sometimes you have to be like like for example fighting games i don't have the yep. ability to like read <laughs> fighting games really well and i know that and i'm not going to be upset at the fighting game that you know oh like the, the, the game should have a, a a read mode where like it highlights what moves going to come up and what i do to counter it like no it should <laughs> i need to get better and learn the counters for that um and to tie it back into cuphead right um it, it, making a game hard like they did with Cuphead and Sekiro and all Souls games and all that, it is not a just a gatekeeping thing by the designers. It, it's a design choice to make you feel something. Because video games are unique because they're, they're the only type of media where you really have to put in player input that you have to engage with it. And you it, shit's not going to move unless you press a button. You know, like it, it's on you. You have to push forward. Um, you have to have certain level of skill, and when it comes to Cuphead, it's necessary because that game wouldn't be what it is if I could just blaze through the bosses. When me and Bradley were fighting the dragon, we died a hundred eighty something times, but each few times I'd say, "Wait a second, have, are you noticing that he's doing this?" Like, um, one really specific one was the dragon has this move where he rolls out his tongue and like little flame assholes dance on his tongue. And they yes. jump. And it's like, this is so bullshit, it's random. And then after like watching it a little bit more, I'm like, wait, Bradley, we can tell which way they're gonna jump. Um and yeah. it's because they like lower their little heads in a direction and we were able to actually start playing around it. And uh whenever we finally beat a boss, we'd celebrate. The game is uh the, I mean the game's hard to give you that feeling. Like mm-hmm. here's what here's what I think. Here, here's here's, here's what the, thinking. We here's will. what I'm thinking. Here's, here's the expert, expert Bradley opinion. Like, like I think one of y'all said, like games like that are meant to be hard to kind of give you that feeling, and you know sometimes they put it in easy mode because someone's like, oh well, I'm, I don't like that I can't beat it. Here's here's what I'm saying. If if someone bought a Pokemon game and they were upset that it didn't play like Mario, I'd be like, well why'd you buy this Buy like this isn't the game you want and <laughs> do a like, bit of research basically yeah it's like yeah. this if Consumer you awareness. if you buy a game like cuphead or dark souls you're like oh i want it to be easy it's like okay well that's not the point of the game like i was on the steam forums for spelunky <laughs> and someone was complaining i just bought this game and it's too hard i can't beat it i've tried it like 50 times and i'm like if the game was easy, you'd beat it and be done in 15 minutes and you'd never play it again. And I feel like, and, and kind of like the, the main argument that I hear about easy modes and so forth is accessibility. And I, I do kind of get that, especially with time and like, like I play Total Warhammer and I play on normal difficulty because I I can't spend the time to figure out really strong stress for hard mode because it's it takes a lot of mm-hmm. like number crunching and thinking and, and and i get that there there's kind of like a but the difference i think between cuphead and sekiro and uh total any warhammer. other kind of dark souls or from warhammer is that warhammer total war warhammer is meant to be a long-term investing game where you you sit down for a long time and you really sit down to figure out the mechanics of this game over a long period of time it's it's kind of whereas cuphead and dark souls they have this feedback loop where it's you die you immediately get back in you like in cuphead when you die you hit the button and you immediately start the boss again yeah like like there is no wait time there you and like if if, in cuphead if you had to wait 
20 seconds for a boss to load, it would drive you insane. Because Souls you want to get... do that. <laughs> yeah. Souls games do that too, but there's also like a lot of in-between time for Souls games mm-hmm. in terms of traveling. You're in um, the fight longer for for those. And you are in the fight longer than you are in... But it's it's very much just like... It's, it's having... It's understanding like the... Of... You no. Know, those, those games are meant to... Like, and I think a lot of the times, like, people don't realize that death is a mechanic in those games, like in yes. Cuphead or in Dark Souls. It's like, you're supposed to die. Like, and that, that was the longest thing it took me for to get in Dark Souls. Was that I would get frustrated when I die. I was like, oh my God, I'm dying so much. This is bullshit. And then I, I sat down and talked to my friend one day. It's like, you know, just assume you're going to die every time you, you you go out from the bonfire. Because you are. You're, you're going to die. And the point is, and don't rush through areas. You, you take them slow and you kind of learn what you're doing. You don't, you shouldn't be trying to run through the game like the time comes from understanding the game <laughs> Ooh. Uh, yeah. that, that reminds me of like a point like if you see people like constantly doing that over and over they're like i keep dying because they keep running through like dark souls mm-hmm. and, and like so, so like you know like the very like the bon- first bonfire outside of the tutorial area where it's got like the grave the graves everywhere Right, and it's like the all the skeletons like one hit you, and it's like obviously you're not supposed to go that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the people who like keep constantly running that way, I'm just like brashing. I'm like constantly bashing my head against a brick. I'm like, why? Like, mm-hmm. don't, don't do that. The game is trying and- to teach you without spelling it out that there you should explore your environment and try to find other ways or find cheesy strategies to beat stuff because it also right. encourages you to explore the your move sets and your weapons and stuff like that. But to, to kind of go back to like the whole difficulty slider system, the point of a difficulty slider is essentially like how much time are you willing to invest in the game? That's mm-hmm. that's the point of the slider. It's not to to say like it's not to you know, go like, oh, I want this to just be a cakewalk. And I, I think sometimes people take it as that, where it's just like, I want to dominate and rule over everything. And I get that. But like, it, it really much is like, how much are you willing to invest in this game? Like, if you go into Halo and put Easy on, th- the game assumes that you're like, oh, you kind of really want, you don't have enough time to play this game as at its highest difficulty. Which is fine. So you, which is fine. Like, and it gets that. And there are, and as you go up and you can kind of, get your skills like if i play a game on hearth and civ or total warhammer or anything i am i am just deciding for myself that i am going to spend a lot of time on this campaign i want to be invested i'm not going to just kind of start it and then end it real quickly and uh and so it really comes down to time and for sekiro and these other kind of games for difficulty it the game is telling you like this is the difficulty of the game and it's up to you to kind of decide your pace of how long you want to learn to play it. And like, and the best way to approach those games is to set your own goal. I want to beat just the first boss. That's yeah. like the first thing for me in Dark Souls. Like, I just want to get past the the wall guardian or whatever it's called. Like when you, not the very first one, but the one after that's on the wall because that's where I always got stuck. Mm-hmm. So it's just like I just you have to take it steps at a time. And every like iteration and every level is its own game in itself. And that's what the designer wants you to think mm-hmm. is that like you you it's its own level you want to just beat the level by level not just kind of run through the whole thing to so. um, to go ahead tyler were you gonna say something uh i i was gonna i, I wanted to talk about like I, i'll skip my part if we can talk a little bit more about difficulty because i enjoy this topic no this is good i like this um so let's i i want to talk about like countering that is two things one the thing that has been lost since like 2008 on games which is game ratings uh i feel like those play a big part um and like maybe no you know no that's terrible no i take that back (laughs) (laughs) ignore that i thought i had somewhere to go but i didn't but i I know i have something with the second one um is like what y'all were just talking about game research a little bit um so I went and had a vacation with my little cousins this past uh, month in March. And they they like to switch and they like to play video games. And some cousins play more than others. But you know what? Like, the Switch is awesome for this. I sit them down and there's, like, Kirby and Mario. Perfect. Kirby's great because it's honestly the newest Kirby game, uh, All-Star Allies. I, I, it wasn't my favorite Kirby game because I thought it was a little too easy. But it's really good for that situation. 
Yeah, it is. And it's and it's a lot of fun to play with little kids and everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know what? This is accessible for this type of audience. Great. That's fantastic. And Mario games. Mario games have always been, you know, that uh, you make what you can out of it a little bit. As in, like, Mario 64, you know, like, uh, people speed run the crap out of that to make it the game more difficult for themselves. Mm-hmm. And they everybody kind of sets their own boundaries. But, like, in this... 2D side scrolling Mario, you give, uh, there's like that little purple money guy. And like, if you play as that uh, character, Nabbit, Nabbit, yeah. Yeah, Nabbit. If you play as Nabbit, he takes no damage from anything. The only way to die is if you literally fall off the level. Donkey Kong uh, Country <laughs> Tropical Freeze has a new funky mode, which that's the, the Donkey Kong series is really hard, but new funky mode is like the, the casual, easier experience. Tropical Freeze deserves that too because that game is wicked hard. That game is not <laughs> easy to be yeah. so difficult. Same thing. Uh, I'll say that one. It's like that contradicts our entire topic, you know, but Tropical Freeze can. At the same time, it's 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 Nintendo knows its audience. That's the other thing yeah. too. Part of it, part of the game design is kind of marketing. It's yeah. when I was in school, marketing is was always told to me. Marketing isn't just trying to advertise it's researching of what you're advertising who you're advertising for and nintendo knows like there are kids gonna be playing there are adults gonna be playing and they know they hit a very broad kind of market surprisingly but they cater but they're known more for kids so they know that they can put in they can make these hard games but they can put in these easy accessible modes um and then from software knows it's a very mature game for mature people and, and adults that have fine motor controls supposedly uh so, so they want to cater towards a group of players that are that want those big, tough challenges that like the the spending hours on a boss and like harken back to those NES, SNES, the Super Nintendo days of like, oh man, I was stuck on Lion King level one for sixteen hours and then I finally <laughs> beat it. Fucking scrub. Um, okay. <laughs> ETSD coming back of Lion real, King. Real talk. Yes. Um, but like, but like that—that's the thing. And I feel like sometimes it's people getting frustrated over the fact that, like, um, oh my god, that's like this game wasn't meant for me. And I kind of I get that sentiment. Like, you, you've there, there's a part of you that is incapable of taking being a part of this experience. And I kind of get that. But at the same time, it, it's kind of what makes that experience that experience is yeah. being part of that struggle it's, and being it's part, part of, of what makes video games unique, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, and I, and I feel like that's why people get really kind of a keep if you don't do things a certain way, like, like, and Willer was big pulper of this. So I was like, Oh, I'm like kingdom hearts. And he looks at me dead in the eyes. Like you have to play on critical mode. <laughs> so, okay. I wanted to talk about kingdom hearts, uh, for a little bit now. Um, because I feel like Kingdom Hearts is a series where my stance on it flips. Um, you know, I'm all about, yeah, I want the hard, difficult one, but I'm also this the person who plays a lot of video games, and I want to be challenged. However, Kingdom Hearts is not a game like Cuphead, and it is not a game like Dark Souls. It is designed to be the this big, arching net where it gathers everyone who loves Nintendo, or not Nintendo, Disney and Square Enix, and that aesthetic and that kind of storytelling. Um, <laughs> storytelling. That kind of story. T- I'm doing air quotes. Um, and, I mean, I, I'm, I like that kind of dumb storytelling. So it's, the air quotes is including me. But uh, essentially, that is a game where it's supposed to be like a theme park ride as well. It's supposed to cater to everyone. So uh, when Kingdom Hearts has beginner difficulty and normal and proud and... I, I'm, I like that. I, I like how there's easier modes so people can experience that game. Um, it's it, That's the kind of experience people want. People uh, They want to give people that uh, wonderful experience. But it also needs, for me, that critical mode and that hard difficulty and that Kingdom Hearts 2 level 1 goodness. Um, yeah. By the way, in the news, quick news, Kingdom Hearts 3 critical comes out tomorrow. So Is I'm Kingdom Hearts the game where you play as Cloud from Final Fantasy? That's the one. I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. I want to... Well, you, you briefly mentioned this and kind of had your Rika moment, I guess. I probably... People would disagree with me. But like one of the things... Another thing <laughs> that I feel like that 
this is so niche and like i'm the only person in this group that i kind of get this connection for but that's theme park rides and theme park attractions mm -hmm. as a huge disney world nerd like shit, the biggest about, the biggest i could talk about disney world for like days we'll have a topic um, on that one day <laughs> you can yeah. just go at it for 40 minutes know, right what'd you say Post September, when we all, uh, you know, yeah. where I get my virginity of of uh, Disney World stolen. Yeah, I need to I need to book the hotel room. I'll get ready for that. Yeah, I, I'm so excited, Willer. Like people going to Disney World and doing it for the first time is my favorite. Uh, but it, there there are rides at Disney World that are extreme, and there are rides at Disney World that are very relaxed and just kind of you know are are there for families to sit down on a boat and just watch a bunch of pirates shoot each other. Um, so, so there's, you have to really know what you are getting into. And I see a lot of, my favorite example is the Haunted Mansion. Uh, the Haunted Mansion in Disney World is one, is a Disney World classic. It's been there since it opened up. It's been in every single Disneyland in some variation that's opened up. It's one of those rides that if God forbid, strike it down and destroy it would probably make every single Disney fan cry. Because it's it's just kind of a staple, and you you it's it's a holy Disney ground site. And one of the things about the Haunted Mansion is the first twenty minutes of that ride, as a six year old, is the most horrifying thing <laughs> you have ever experienced. And confirm, yeah. It, and it's 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 you 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 are trapped in a room. A ghost tells you that something's happening. The the pictures on the wall begin to stretch literally in front of you a person hangs themselves it's Jesus. crazy yeah no it's but like spoilers joe yeah I, don't, I don't, don't spoil me bro <laughs> it, like but the point being is that uh it's designed at first 20 minutes it's designed to scare you and and every kind of theme park and every the big thing about disney is they really focus on their stories and it's like i'm almost complete opposite when it comes to games and theme park rides I like a theme park ride that has a lot of care and story put into it rather than the actual like kind of roller coaster experience, which is really dumb, I feel. <laughs> but that's me. Um, and so the, the point of High Mansion, the story is trying to tell is that like death is scary and terrifying, but that doesn't mean death is bad. Death is death. It's part of life. And you just have to realize that there are things beyond it that we don't know. And it kind of makes a fun little spin on that near the end of the ride. Um, but at the same time, like you don't take your four-year-old on Haunted Mansion. It's so scary. <laughs> Why doesn't the Titan in Six Flags have an easy mode? Yeah, like that's that's the other thing, and and that actually is a thing at Disney World in one of the rides for Mission Space. There are two different modes. There is green mode and orange mode, and Ooh. I think part of that was because there was an accident that occurred at Disney World where a, a young boy was killed during the ride. Um. But part of that was that the parents snuck the boy on board, and he was about six inches too short for the ride, well. which meant his body couldn't take this like six <sighs> Gs of this ride. And that's just people being stupid. Yeah, and I don't get that, man. It's just like it's physically dangerous and life threatening yeah. to like, be below this height on this ride. Like, we'll, we'll sneak our kid on it. I, I have tons of stories about people going to this world and being dumb and stupid. Um, but like a big thing there is that these rides are designed and and these safety hazards are put into place because they have thought ahead and said like here's everything that needs to be checked off and done. And the same with the video games, they set their difficulties and they set like their target audience because that's what the game is designed to do. They're like this game is hard, this game is mature, this game is um, has no difficulty slider. This game has difficulty sliders, but they're, but you know you lose parts of the game because you make it easier or so forth. So when you like the people that have designed these games don't do it because they feel like they're excluding people. They're doing it because it's all made with intention and purpose. They, they want to include as many people as they possibly can, but they also realize that there are some limiting boundaries and you have, to, and they try to convey that as much as they can to their audience. And people get frustrated when they're told like, I can't bring my six year old on, on Mount Everest. It's like, no ma'am, because he's uh like he's, he's three, six. Inches, he's six inches too short for the ride. He will fall out. <laughs> And and I feel like people get and the amount it, and I bring that up because people throw these tantrums of fits and they're not really garnered because they chose to ignore everything else, the advertisement, yeah. that graphics that the game is physically telling them, and you're just like, 
shit. And like even now, like if you feel like the game is too hard for you, you probably it's just like return it. You know, get your money back. Yeah. Most things have a two hour policy, right. and if, even if if you bitch and complain, they'll probably return it anyways. But yeah. I, um, I do recommend looking at doing your research. Uh, very important. Yeah, I do. That's a I good agreed. skill. It's a good skill to learn. Oh man, I, I had something to build on with that. Oh, it's gone. Oh no, that's the worst. No. <laughs> Theme parks, Everest, mountains. Well, don't. Okay. So kids on Mount we're gonna we're gonna start wrapping up the Cuphead slash game difficulty topic here. Um, everyone. I'd like to out that in Cuphead, there's a boss. Uh, sorry, but there's a boss called Mr. Wheezy, and he looks exactly like the ghost of Duke Ellington from Big Mouth. I haven't gotten to that one. I look forward to it. Um, just, you know, if y'all have Google, check no, that out. I want, no, no design spoils. <laughs> I, I watched some I watched some Cuphead early, like I watched streams and like Let's Plays, but I would always stop around World 2, um, so I'm I'm reaching new stuff now. Uh, Tyler, maybe you'll remember what you were gonna say, but let's let's all talk about just to wrap it up our favorite bosses and stuff in in Cuphead. Um. So I've only gone to the dragon, but uh, I really like the <laughs> fight. Um, the moon fight, I I was frustrated, but it was, but that's one of those fights that like once I beat it, I felt like oh my god, I did it. It was really kind of like a big crowning achievement. Um, the frogs gave me the most anger, <clears throat> I think. Ken and Ryu. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm with Joe. Hildeberg gave me the most satisfaction on beating it. I, I was very, like, ah, finally. Like, I, I, I'm done. You I, know? I think Hildeberg is fucking sick. She's so cool. Like, her design and her attacks and her transformations, she's easily my favorite. Um, big respect to the blob boy. The words, this is incredible, were uttered as he was faking me out with his, like, half delay jumps. I was like, this man is in my head. He's He's in there. <laughs> You can ask. You can ask Bradley. I was kind of at awe at that boss. He he, he was a cool guy. Um, oh yeah. I'm surprised you didn't play it before. I'm Will glad Bradley's Skates. alive. Yeah. He's Bradley's out there somewhere alive. Um, you must fucking talk a lot. And then uh, the I mean this is a podcast. Uh, the the Gorgon girl. Uh, I didn't get to beat her. She's oh, the last God. one we fought. Hala Maria. Yes. Oh, She's... such a babe. <laughs> Bradley was like, "All right, when we get to this boss, you got you got to look at her hip sways." And I was like, "Yeah, they're pretty good. Those good the animations." Good. What about version point five of Big Mom? Uh, what are you about? don't know. The, if the, I... candy, the, the candy girl. Oh, her. Oh my man. God. Me and Bradley were like, "Yo, this this one part of the boss is the chump," uh, and then he was the hardest one. Yeah. Did, did she get a nerve? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I'd probably say my favorite boss, at least how, like, the fight is presented, is Sally's stage play. But Willer hasn't gotten there yet, so I'm not things. gonna. That's a good one. Say anything about that? Right. But uh, as far as like the yeah, fight right. itself, mechanically, King Dice is the coolest shit ever. I love it so much. Mm. I hear I hear King Dice is harder than the final boss himself, and one of the best bosses there is. It's pretty freaking hard. It took me days. Can't wait. Me and Bradley really have a play date for for finishing it up tomorrow. Yeah. Oh boy. I mean, I feel like King Dice is one of those like, uh, what's the character from Stardust Crusaders? Uh, vanilla vanilla ice. ice. Uh, yeah. Bro. Yeah. I, I feel like he's the vanilla ice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Rick, takes out like he, he's the Valentine. Yeah, no, I, 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 Tyler means he destroys the crew and he's not even the final boss. I feel you. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I, I'll find out one day. But all right, we'll that's that's good for our.